Now I've left this camera on pretty much infinite at the end. And that is our friend, the empty space again. It won't run this length of time. Because what I will do is when I want to trigger off the next scene, I will put another tag in. Okay, so I will put a tag there, or whenever I want it to trigger off the next scene. And I will name that, where it says enter new label, I'll go on to scene two. I'll explain how that works in a minute. It works the same way, actually, as the as the tags that we put on the character. Now, what I'll then do is I'll get some sequences on. And in here, I'll put on a tag sensor. And connect that up to this sequence. So, oh, I've done that wrong. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. Now, if I call this scene two, and I make sure the radius is big enough, see that circle moving there? Let's see, I'm just kind of guessing. What will happen is, as the sequence of bar moves along and hits that, that will then trigger off whatever I put on the next sequencer. And I will put on this next sequencer the next scene, or scene two. Obvious, I know. Now, if we have a look at the thermometer, you can see all the way over and to the left here. It's taken up quite a bit of space. And if I have a lot of scenes like this in a movie, uh, this one's probably, I don't know, about five minutes long, something like that. A Christmas Carol was an hour long. So you can see I'm not going to get a whole lot of scenes in like this. So what I need to do is make sure that I save this with the trigger on. Okay, this toggle here. That's the toggle that's going to kick off the whole sequence here, remember? Now what I'm going to do is capture the whole lot. Now what I'm going to do is get rid of the whole lot. Now on here, where we're going to have all our scenes, so this would be scene 3, scene 2, scene 1, etc, etc. Because this is the first one, I want this to play as soon as people come in. Let me just uh, get this down to normal size. I'm not used to using it full size. There we go. Now what I need to do is put a trigger, or I call them triggers, the proper name is Toggle. I'm going to output that onto here. Okay. And now I'm going to put an emitter right at the very start of this sequencer. That emitter, I'm going to choose the object, which is the object that I've just saved. You give that a little bit of time to load in. Just bung that there out of harm's way. I don't want linear velocity or angular velocity. You can ignore that. Input action, we are going to do emit once. Frequency goes down to zero. Now the lifetime. What we'd need to do is actually time it, or measure it in the bars. I'm going to assume for the sake of argument that it's 100 seconds. I know, I know it's a, a, a lot longer than that, but just to demonstrate this. I'm going to ignore sync. Leave max emitted at infinite. That's what that little loop signifies. Maximum emitted at once. Well, obviously, we only want one, not 10. 
create effect is appear and destroy effect is disappear. Now, when I unpause this, nothing is going to happen, right? Absolutely nothing. But as soon as we put that on, there we go, and our movie is playing. Good afternoon. Do I have the pleasure of addressing Mr. Cruz? And let's just rewind that. Now, assuming that we had a hundred second long video, one thing you can do is set your seconds per stripe to 100. Now, we did put a tag in at the end of that scene, but another way of doing this would be to put a tag in here. Let me just close this note down. So if I was to put a tag in here, at this first bar, give it the same label, scene 2, it would take the bar 100 seconds to move across here. So it would emit the first scene straight away. Then when the bar hits this, that tag becomes active. And this would then trigger off whatever we have for scene two. So you make your scenes up one at a time and then place them on sequences like this. Now, I find this th there's loads of ways of doing everything. There always is a little big planet. But the reason that I like doing this is that sometimes you want a little bit finer control. So if I put a sequencer on here and I set each stripe to one second, sometimes you might want to fine tune something and there you go. You can fine tune it because what will happen is it will take the bar 100 seconds to get it here for this sequence to set at one second. So now it will only take the bar two seconds to get to there. And that allows you to really fine tune your scenes. Now, while I was in the process of making this, I was popping on and off Twitter. Uh, Twitter's a good place if you do want to get in touch with me. I th the most ideal place if you want to get in touch with me and ask me something is my YouTube channel. Seriously, that's the best place. That's the place that I frequent the most often. Uh, so if you have a comment or questions, so do put them on there. But anyway, I was on Twitter and I said I was doing this as a project and asked if anybody had any uh, help or tips that they particularly wanted. And somebody asked me, how do I put a level link in? Very simple. So just say I wanted the level link to appear here. So instead of going to a different scene, I'll get rid of that. That's no good. What I need to do is find the level link thing. So we go onto this page and we, there we see it, level link and the gameplay kits. And you would just put that somewhere out of harm's way. All right, that's that stuck down. And you choose what level you want. So you can go down these are my published levels. You can go down recently played. You can go to my queue. You can go to favorites. You can go to cool levels. So you'd pick whatever level you wanted. So it might be that you've got a, another level in the series or you do a little movie and then you wanted to go to a gameplay level, but whatever. I'll just choose this one just for the hell of it. So that's the level in. And you can use tags switches, batteries, anything you want to trigger this off because once that gets triggered off, I'll put this in here. There we go. Job done. And let's say you can use tags for this. Um, you could just put a battery on like so. Anything you want to trigger that off. And basically when the bar hits that point, 
that will then load in the next level. If you are linking a level to something that's not directly related though, it's good practice to give people a bit of warning. So you might shove this at the end and put a, a magic mouth in. And in this magic mouth, you type, you know, warning. Uh, level link something like that you know uh, you, you need to let people know that that's what you're going to do display it as a subtitle there's going to be no speech you don't need a label for it and basically just make sure that you've given people enough warnings that if they don't want to actually load in another level that they have enough option to hit the start button and quit out I, I hope this has been useful for you if you have any specific questions, put them down in the comments and I will try and answer them. The follow on that I'm going to do from this is actually looking into how I choose camera angles you know, and how I try and sort of bring a scene to life. So this issue, this episode, if you like, is more about the technical aspects. In the next one, we're going to be looking at what I'm looking for when I'm trying to direct a scene if I can give myself as fancy a title as director <laughs> uh, but yeah that's what I'm going to do for for number two any comments questions etc do put them down in the comments on here it's the best place to get in touch with me all right this is Muppet out I hope it's been useful bye